first of its kind, really. Yeah, but these cars are so nice to just flow and chill and just. I mean, we've been we've been driving for almost ten minutes in tandem, and it doesn't even. It just you know it's. You can get super close tandems like this. So if you guys liked my 2.5 cars when they were out, I mean, you guys will definitely love these even better. Um, but these are going to be more catered to realism. Oh, I did. Oh, my oh, God. My. Too much, <laughs> more catered to realism where the motors are, the engines are correct for the cars, for the factory. They're not going to be like the same engine platform. So every car is going to have different, you know, torque release, different power bands, but they're all going to be on a similar power setup so that you can do tandems like this. And that's what's crucial in, you know, a public server aspect for cars, to be able to have fun where you're not getting left by, you know, a thousand yeah. horsepower pro car and you're in like a 300 horsepower Corolla. Like, you see, I'm not going to lie, these cars are freaking perfect for a beginner drifter. Like, if you just now play in Seto, yeah, you know. I would recommend these cars, I'm not gonna lie. Because they are very fun to drift in. <laughs> For real. So, anticipation and excitement is definitely building with these cars now that the process for what I've been doing has started now. Uh, hopefully, these won't take as long as the other ones when I promised them and they took like six months. Um, these will not take that long at all. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. All right. Let's see if I can chase you down. This car giving me a hard time. You ain't leaving me, Addy. Oh my god! Oh. Oh. <laughs> that was actually not a bad run. That looked so crazy and hectic from my view. First, Yay, I finally got the whole first person track. life, Addy. I know, right? That's uh, that's an advantage of being up on roof. I don't have to deal with all that. I'm gonna turn my underglow on. It's a, it ain't comp time. Hey, you know my opinion on that. <laughs> I had a bad entry. I'll catch you though. AC, do the smoke! <laughs> oh, th this car loves to throw up like clouds. That was kind of shallow on my part, Eddie. Sorry. You're good. So, like I said, we're going to be setting and forgetting the third gear, but you guys know where this video is really going. The Drifter is a best friend and why I feel that way. So, I think. I may go through and tweak some settings, but I, I'm not really finding any settings other than maybe friction of the wheel that I might want to make a little bit stiffer, but that would tail into all different types of cars. So we would need to find out if we need to adjust the friction to make the wheel spin faster and things like that, but that's all tunable in the app. So. Without further ado, the moment why you guys are really here. So we have to leave this car in third gear. Because don't have a shifter. And when I take this Mazda wheel off, I no longer have paddles. But I'm going to grab my buddy's <laughs> Spark Co. wheel um, with the NRG quick release. And we're going to take it and just snap it on into place. It didn't make a ding. I'm actually kind of sad. We're going to take that off and we're going to actually make it make a ding. So there's the ding. That's the ding I wanted to hear. So as you can see, the quick release, the 2.0 quick release from NRG bolts right on. It's the same platform and everything. So now we have the Mazda R9 base with the wheel that if you have one of these sitting in your actual car and you wanted to get a sim base that you don't need any adapters like a special Fanatec hub or a hub adapter or plates like you need on like a Thrustmaster and things to put a real wheel on. You can literally take the wheel and the quick release that you have on your car and it will bolt directly to the base by simply putting it on 
and clicking it into place. So now we're gonna go full rip with this. Now, like I said, I don't have paddles, I don't have a shifter, but big thank you to my buddy Charles for giving me his wheel out of his actual car, since I don't currently have a quick release from NRG on me right now. And it just works. If you notice, I it, it's so amazing that this is just working that the base works without a wheel connected. You don't need to have it. So you can use any wheel you really want with just a quick release adapter. So with everything finally set up and all my Mazda equipment and my shifters and everything hooked up onto the base, this thing is so nice and so solid. The GT Elite base from Next Level, definitely super aggressive and very stable. So big thank you to Next Level for hooking me up and sending this out and partnering with me here on the channel. So did get a chance to of course to mount my mic behind my monitor super stable monitor mount and everything back there super aggressive and great with all the adjustability and everything one thing that i will have to get used to a little bit is the way i had to position my shifter now with that plug down there it's a little bit angled back but you know after running a little bit of testing with it getting everything set how i want to it feels awesome so we're gonna go into game and actually get some rips in it and see how stable this base is. So we're gonna switch over to the game cam and get everything all situated. This chase run, I believe this was probably my best, one of my best chase runs against this guy. We were pretty much running back to back a couple times. I was throwing it in, really aggressive on transition, bathed in smoke, but right there on this man's door in that chaser, that royal purple rain -X synthetic oil car. Yep, we uh, definitely, uh, yeah, do a little life flash on that one. It's R5 getting put through its drift paces. Managing all the left foot brakes. Including in that downhill section, we managed it quite well, actually. You definitely can't shift, though. You kind of got to get in the gear and set and forget. Luckily, this track is pretty much a second gear track. Set and forget it! With these cars. Otherwise, we would have to turn on auto clutch. I do not have on and I probably should have turned on so we can actually change gears easier you know but you know what for no clutch and no handbrake we can uh, pretty much ride this dude's door to make sure that jitters don't get to us Don't think we're allowed to touch rumbles there, so we're gonna have to alter that slightly. And I think well, that's a little bit wide. And we came out of that zone really early. Kinda had to pop that handbrake to get the car to go where we wanted it to on that run. So let's take a look. So, a little bit more customization available now with the change with the light changes and everything like that and being able to do that which is gonna be great for like if you do endurance style racing and you have your room get dark when it gets dark in the racetrack it would be nice to be able to have the buttons which is actually good for quick uh quick reference i broke way too soon up for that but this rtr is just getting down once again a big thank you to camus for sending this out to me give me the chance to uh do this on this DD wheel. Definitely very big of feedback feel different from the other DDs I was rocking, being, you know, obviously 15 new meters instead of my nine. F this actually feels quite nice. I don't think there's much tuning that needs to be done. It's uh, quite comfortable with this RTR for sure. Oh, we're in dirt. As I say that, we go into the dirt. Oh, Brandon Patrick's is in here now. That is Ryan Litterall. Are we going to get a chase game against Ryan Litterall? What? Okay, I'll take it. Oh, Alan Hines, too. This lobby's getting stacked right now with 
all the big players. I mean, I will tandem with Ryan Literal right now. We kind of thrown in his door. Oh, he went a little saucy in the wall. I can't see where I'm going. <laughs> Man, that was a solid run. So it's a big deal if people want to get, say, this FSR wheel and use it on, say, a Sim Magic and out, you know. Uh, Simicube or other direct drive wheelbases that may not offer ooh, a wheel like this and they want this style of a wheel because I know Camus does not offer wheels like this right now and this is just an awesome add-on to the wheel Ooh. But Ooh, a little lock up there. But the fact that what we're going to be able to do with this ooh, this hub get a little lost attraction there is seamlessly streamline all of our plugins to wheelbases because I know my R9 it doesn't have uh, any adapters in the back for say handbrake or pedals and everything like that. So I'd be having to run all these cables for all the Mozo equipment and stuff like that, if you're running a full Mozo set, well, now you'll just have the two power cords. I do have the USB and the auxiliary USB going into the PC. You'll just have those two USB ports going into the computer instead of a handbrake one, a pedal one, a wheel one, and all this. Everything will be able to plug into that hub box, which is going to be amazing when it comes to utilizing cable management and stuff like that 